I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, a, I'm sure that anybody knows me. I'm Bill Bolta, Bill Bolta from Pembroke, and uh, I'm also on the uh, uh, Heron Fisheries in Pembroke. And um, over the over the past several years, um, we've had some problems with uh, uh, diversion where the juvenile fish and adult fish were were uh, going into uh, the diversion pipe and going into Silver Lake. Um, and I have to say that that uh, Brian has been very good about when we observe it and notice it and call him, he reacts right away and shuts the diversion pipe down. But, but the problem is and then we're talking with Division Marine Fisheries. Um, they've been trying to talk to Brockton uh, for at least the last five years about replacing and repairing the uh, couple of needed things that need to be done um, to stop to stop that. Um, so November 9th, I guess it was uh, October uh, October 9th. October 9th. Of this year, um, some uh, people reported a fish kill in Silver Lake of uh, juvenile heron. <coughs> they said uh, the Division of Marine Fisheries went down and investigated. They said they were a juvenile heron, and there was probably at least 2,500 dead fish. Um, this year is probably the biggest year that we've had in Pembroke. In you can't remember how long because it's, we had over 307,000 fish that came up and went through the county this year. How many? Over 307,000. We, we came in second in the state. So the only ones that beat us on, on fish count this year was um, the Charles River in Boston, which is an extremely large one. So, and I think the reason for that is because Pembroke has worked so hard to get the fish numbers up by cleaning the streams and taking care of problems that we've seen. So uh, last year we asked Brockton to, um, to fix the screening that's on the diversion pipe. Um, Division of Marine Fisheries has asked them what they told me was the last five years they've been working on trying to get them to fix the diversion pipe. So last year we, we observed fish going through, juvenile fish going through the screening, and um, the guys took it upon themselves to go out and buy a net and string it across an area down there so that the juvenile fish wouldn't continue. But again, if you call Brian and say we have we have fish going in so late, there's no way for them to get out, and there's no way for them to come back. So we lose them. Unfortunately, there's no way to tell how many fish are gone, especially this year. So this is, the, like I said, the, the biggest uh, year that we've had in a really long time. And it's kind of disheartening that Brockton won't even acknowledge letters that we send them. Um, advising about problems. Um, Division of Marine Fisheries has, has um, sent them more letters this year and told them about two different locations. One, there was a fit, there was a problem with the ladder. Um, 
on the um, on the dam at Gorham Mill Pond, and they wouldn't acknowledge or call him at all, and so he ended up doing the uh, putting in the new fishway anyway. So it was it was uh, engineered, constructed, or whatever, and put up without the approval of Rockton because it's just something that has to be done. Um, but they still haven't addressed the problem about the screening that's there. And also, Division Green Fisheries wants Brockton to, to not only put the screening there, but also put something prior to the screening so that the juvenile fish or um, even the eggs or, or whatever the pre the larva. Yeah, it's, it's the larva or whatever is, could be coming through with the waterfall when they, when they open the diversion pipe and you probably wouldn't even see them. They, they would go right through. So he wants to have a pre-screening before the other screening is here. And they just keep ignoring and they don't even answer the letters. So um, I, don't, I don't know where we should go from here. We have a meeting with the Board of Selectmen tonight. And I'm also the chairman on the Board of Selectmen and I intend to bring it up with the town because um, as far as I know, there has been no communications back to Division of Marine Fisheries off Pembroke that Brockton understands the problem and they're going to work with us to, to take care of it. Um, it just, it just uh, disheartens me very much that this fish kill could take place or we don't even know how many fish went in there. We have no idea how many fish could have gone in there. So, um, is it our problem to do this and take care of it, or is it Brockton? And everybody has told me that um, everybody has told me that it's Brockton because they own the diversion, and they um, and they also own the the um, the dam that's there and you know, all that area that that is there. So. Um, I don't know whether to uh, to have the environmental police come in and cite Brockton um, and give them a citation for, uh, I know if I went to Plymouth and I caught two stripers and you could only catch one, they would take away your truck, they'd take away your trailer, they'd take away all your fishing gear, they'd you know, they'd take away your mother if they could, you know what I mean, for having one extra fish. But, but to lose this many juvenile fish, and we don't even know how many we've lost because these are only the dead ones that they found. This, this is not, not the live ones. There could be thousands of live ones that are in there also. We had, um, they weren't supposed to divert after May 1st because they supposedly stopped May 1st because we had, we had a lot of juvenile fish leaving early this year. Um, because we had so much in the pond, they also came up after the 307,000 fish were recorded, they took the, the recorder up because they thought that was the end of the fish run. And I got a call from a couple of people on the North River saying, there's a whole new group of fish coming up, of people that live on the river. And we estimated somewhere between 50 to 60,000 fish that came up after the common was pulled. Mm -hmm. And those fish went in. And I don't know whether there wasn't any room for them in the ponds or what, but they ended up going to the cranberry bog at the corner of Mattakees and Pond Street, and which created another problem. And they ended up spawning in the cranberry bog. Wow. So um, the whole bog was filled with heron spawning in the cranberry bog. So that created a problem, so we had to keep the water level up. Did you get the water to, yeah, we from with, Phil? We worked with Hanson. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they right away said, whatever water you need or whatever to, to uh, right. you know, let us know, and they gave us enough water. So we regulated the water in the cranberry bog um, all spring and part of the summer. 
um, and did watch quite a few of the of the juvenile fish leave, you know, and come out. But um, but they they came out early, and some other other of the small fry left early. So if Brockton was diverting them, it's an attraction, you know, for them to that to that um, that pipe to go there because that's a natural flow of water. They think that's they're going out to sea. But mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they don't go. So. So when you say they were supposed not to divert after May 1st, they had agreed not to divert after May 1st? Yes, we called them and said that there was a lot of fish coming up and going uh -huh. down. And, and Brian uh, said that he would stop diverting the first part of May. I don't know if it was May 1st, but I know it was the very first part of May. Yeah. Um, and they, they stopped diverting in May. So um, I don't know if these are fish that may have been in there before. May 1st, uh, or, and then they, you know, grew up uh, a little more than what they did, and then they died, so we have no reason why they died, no idea why they died. Yeah. Uh, but it's just um, these simple little things that don't cost a lot of money. Um, the one being um, Division of Marine Fisheries said they were doing the engineering, and they would do the work to replace the screens. They just needed help from Brockton to get some money to, to buy the materials and stuff. So um, we just need to address that and uh, come out and, and take care of it. So, okay. Jim? Uh, Water Commission Board. Um, I believe it was last April or May. I addressed this to Brian. And Brian said he was going to take care of it. And I brought it up to him a couple of times. And this is the first time I'm aware of it. I need to get together with you and find out exactly what's going on. And it's time to do something. And by all means, yeah. call them by all means. I mean, this is ridiculous. There's, there's no reason no. for them to want to do it. And it I'm going to follow this up. We appreciate that. I mean, we, we would just, you know, appreciate somebody from Brockton getting a hold of us and, and say. I, I thought, what was it, was it a fill the boom or something? He had been talking about putting in there. That's in, that's in the time that the query. Yeah, my God. They would do some type of boom. <laughs> it's, a, it's just a screen. It's yeah, see, see I'm that, to say, you gotta get this. Yeah, the problem is that the diversion pipe, where the diversion pipe is, just by putting a screen there, what ends up happening if they divert. We're not trying to take the water away from rock and we're just trying to say oh, no, don't I take our fish with it. So so if there was if they left and just put that screen there, what would end up happening is all the juveniles would be attracted to their and they mash up against the screens. Mm -hmm. And then they gotta come down and clean the screens and take all the juveniles out. So if you go further back, uh, up further, I can show you where we have our net down there now. We put our own we'll net in. Together. And we'll go over um, the whole thing. And I'll find out yeah. just what the hell is going on. Yeah. But I'm just really upset. Yeah, and I mean, we got two because I mean, we've been working really hard to try to bring the fish back. Um, there was only three towns in the whole state that had a rise this year in Heron. All the rest of them went down. So, so um, I have no idea whether it's got something to do with the offshore uh, draggers, you know, taking the taking the fish and from those fish were late, so they didn't get there in time, and the draggers went through and pulled them out. Or I, you know, I have no idea. But they're working on all those theories about you know trying to save these fish. So we sure aren't going to save the fish by allowing something like this to happen when it's a quick fix. It's not a lot of money, and it's, and it's uh, something that should be done. Yes, I Can was... I just add a couple of pieces of information to it? Sure. Yep. <laughs> the, um, just, just two things. One, one is that one of the, you know, they shouldn't be in sort of like anybody coming from 
as opposed to scrap coming from the North River and ending up in some way. Right. But just adding to the problem is they would be able to go out sort of lake and down the Jones River if the water wasn't dry down for them. Right. So it kind of highlights a problem that we've been, you know, we've been working on getting fish passage from up the Jones River into Silver Lake. And, and that's pretty doable. I mean, Brockton has, it doesn't have a problem with that. It said, yeah, we, we like the idea of fish being able to get up into the lake. Um, the Vision Reef Fisheries has said they'll pay to put the fish ladder in there. The problem has always been everyone's recognition that we might be able to get them in, but we're never going to be able to get them up because come the fall, the water levels are so low. Mm -hmm. And so, granted, these fish shouldn't have been there in the first place, but it's a real indication of what we're talking about, which is that the limiting factor of having Jones River pairing migration is that come the fall, they can't get out. So it's just something to kind of keep in mind when we're talking about all these bigger picture things. The other thing is, that Jim, and I think you would, anybody in the room, you would care the most about this, is we're talking about how they got there and why they got there. We're not talking at all about why 2,500 fish die in your drinking water supply. Right. And so no one's been able to put their finger on that, but you know, generally fish kills are related to water quality problems. And so if, you know, we use herring as indicators a lot. We use them as indicators of water quality. We can use them as indicators of flow problems, all that stuff. And, um, you know, you might want to bring it up to the Water Commission, to the, to the guys over at the plant, to be asking the question, are you watching the water quality in the lake enough to know why these fish just died? Yeah, you know? that was the first question. What did they die from? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I don't know if the Division of Marine Fishery took some of those fish. I, I talked to them about <coughs> their theories on why they died. They really didn't have any theories. You know, the, sometimes you get in the fall, lakes will, um, especially the shallow ponds, will have a turnover event where the water temperature you know, changes and so the low oxygen parts of the lake will come up and kill fish in the top. It's not typical in Silver Lake because it's so deep, you know, that doesn't typically happen as much. So. It was just, it's a big question to me why, why this would happen, and so I would be concerned if it's also a public health problem. Right. Mm -hmm. There were also mussels killed, uh, 50,000 mussels in Silver, in Silver Lake. That was uh, previous in yeah. 2016. Yeah. So in the previous summer, in the last summer, 2016. So there's something going on in Lake Well, that, they were killed by drying the lake down. <laughs> but, 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 but they're a big, but they're a big part of how the lake works in yeah. terms of water filtration and oh, huge ecosystem. The so you could have an impact uh, by killing off fifty thousand mussels and leaving them in the lake um, that plays out the following summer. So. Alex, oh. I'm sorry. Did you say they died? The the mussel they were stranded. They were just well, stranded. stranded because the water was so low. Is it oh. yeah. What size net? Would be required to stop. Well, I believe that the lava got just pulled in. You can't see it. You, can, you really watch everything. Not put this up, but we really used to pay a lot of attention. And um, other fish commissioners in other areas uh, Phil lava, lava. Really think uh, he donated a net for us to stop it from happening. But it's an eighth inch net. What size net do you require to stop a lava of 16? of an inch or because that would be important enough to not rely on nets to stop a lot of them going into solar light. Because those are the ones you can't really see. Those are the ones that are going to slip on. Like I say, I think we get together with them. See how we get going and go with it. And then, yeah. So, is there any resolution or next step? Are you folks going to meet offline? Is are you going to arrange a meeting or? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll arrange. I'm going to arrange a meeting with him. Okay. Now one on one. Yeah, I'm pretty available. Okay. That's pretty available. Mostly, I just get a uh, no. If you have an extra piece of paper, I didn't bring that. Do you live with a tiny one? Do you want to take this? <laughs>
Yeah, I don't, my, uh, my jacket is out in the car with ten my cards in it. So. Well, I brought this because... Can, can I suggest another action too? I, without our yeah. Kingston representative here, I'm just yeah. speaking for Kingston a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna, I know the advisory board here mostly kind of makes recommendations to the mm -hmm. commission. The commission has skipped their last three months worth of meetings. Yeah. So if there's a recommendation that the advisory board can suggest the commission take up the issue as well. Definitely, yeah, yeah, oh, definitely. Um, I asked um, for someone to come today to give us an update from the commission, but um, I don't think that they're going to be coming, so well, I'll pass it on to them. Have they now. been meeting? Not for a couple of no, months. No, because I have July was the last one. The last one, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. What do we have? We have one coming up. Do we have? I'm sorry. Do we stand the appointments on? Yes. So that's yep. That's really a nice segue. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> um, so uh, one other thing that we should um, discuss today. Well, let me just say this about the commission. It's really all I know is that they have reached out and they have an agreement with an engineering firm. Um, to do some, I guess, surveying, right? Field um, survey of um, Forge Pond and Furnace Pond, um, and I, I don't know what else, but the, I have very little information here. Nothing, I don't think, has started yet in the surveying, but they have an agreement with the firm, and they're um, working out the, the details of starting that. Um, so they had received $50,000, and that's what they're gonna be using that money for. And then, as Scott mentioned, um, the other piece of business to just talk about now is that we staggered the appointments of the commissioners, which is you know one of the main things we do, um, and they all expire in February. So it's it's February every year that we have to um, reappoint someone. So this February 2018, it's the Brockton commissioners' seat that will need to be reappointed. Um, so we'll have to, you know, work to set up a meeting for February and, um, and deal with that. So I'll reach out to uh, the current commissioner and find out whether he is uh, willing to stand for re-election. And then any other candidates can contact us and let us know that they are interested. And then in February we'll meet to appoint that seat. So I'll email you all um, to set that meeting up for shoot for early February so that we have the rest of the month yeah. to fall back on with weather. I know, February, last year we literally met on the 28th, I believe, so we just made it. Um, but that is the other piece of business. Okay. Does anybody have any other new business? Uh, well, uh, Silk Lake, I guess it's down four inches. And uh, we've been pumping from uh, the end of the uh, from Aquarius. We've been doing almost two and a half uh, million dollars a day. Uh, Aquarius and that and it had a big effect on Silver Lake. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the money is going to be out on that, so I don't know how much longer it's going on. Um, and uh, they still thinking of buying that? Well, the auctions are over. We've got to, we've got to bring up a couple of grandstands, so I think it's going to happen. It, I mean, it's crazy if they don't they, they save a million dollars a year. That's without selling any water. And, you know, they, the grandstanders had a call in the NWRA, this and that, and have all these public meetings, and there's nothing there. There's no, it's, 
the cost is phenomenal. It's 12 to 15 years away after the permitting process and whatever. There's no way of crossing 128. Uh, it's, there's a thousand reasons why, and, and the money is, there's no connection with Stoughton or anything that can handle it. So I could go on and on, but just a couple That's, that's to connect to Brockton? Brockton was looking into connecting to the NWRA? Um, they had to have another alternative, as we understand this. And, uh, you know, it's just the land process. I think they were required to, to hook up with that back in the 60s when they made the agreement to get water from France Pond and from Mount Ponce Pond. They were supposed to be the secondary. Yeah. Uh, well, anyways, like I say, um, nothing's major. One other thing, and this is kind of a side note, is last week a PNS was signed on the property of the um, gas powered power plant. By a recycler, a uh, recycling outfit. So, Brockton's getting another recycling plant. 200 trucks more a day into the city, <laughs> thousands of seagulls, uh, nice smell, and property values of, I don't think they're going to soar. And I don't think they'll be bringing in $4 million a year revenue either. So, and then we've got what they wanted. Okay, well that would be great, and I will um, email the commission with um, with this as well and let them know, and mm -hmm. I'll copy all of you on that too. And are they meeting? I don't know when they have a meeting scheduled. I haven't, they haven't had one seen. Lot, no, right? they haven't had one. No, anymore. July. I think yep, July. I think was the last one. Was the last one. Yeah. Um, that the one other thing that, that we've been doing down there too is, um, and we call it hell for it, right? Because uh, we put a two by eight plant on top of the dam that is the uh, Brockton Homes. and. What that does is that saves more water. So um, we put it on there to save water so that we would have extra water. I don't know why it was ever removed, you know, from before, but we never removed it. But when we, and the whole new group started about almost five years ago, it's, we decided why don't we save water rather than um, what they told us, the daytime was there was about four, four and a half inches or five inches below the top of the dam was where Brockton could take from. And, and what we've given them is another eight inches that, that we can use some of it to get the fish out, which is, which is all we want to do. And all that, so Brockton has been enjoying that other water that would have been gone downstream that we gave to them and they complained that we did it. Now, I don't understand why they complained about it because we saved it for them. You know, it's we just wanted to make sure that we had enough water for the fish. And we did. We had plenty of water for the fish, so so whatever is left over they you know they can have, which was, they ended up with more water than what they normally would have got. So but anyway, I'd be more than glad to meet with you and uh, yeah, should, we'll, should we get we'll get together. Okay, very good. All right, so we will um, plan to meet again in February. We will shoot for scheduling for the beginning of the month and hope the weather gods smile on us. Um, all right. We'll start in February and then we'll make it by the end. <laughs> I know, we'll start for the beginning. That's exactly what happened to us last month, so I really shouldn't even talk about the weather. Just just oh, right, right. Um, all right, well, good enough. Is there anything else? All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All right, all in favor? All right. Beautiful. Thank you all very much for coming on a miserable afternoon.